I like the music kind of being a mystery to myself because that way when we're engaged in the creation process, there's no preconceptions and there's no there's no rules or whatever. Anthony, how are you? Because this is an intense week for you. Your album's coming out. You've got back and forth with directors of music videos. You've got label shit to, t to deal with. Uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, um, I'm feeling good. Thanks. Uh, you know, it's an exciting week because we got the album release fast approaching. You know, today's uh, Tuesday and it's released this Friday. It's going to be released this Friday. So, yeah, super excited about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let, let's jump straight into it. I mean, there's obviously a, co a couple of things that I want to address with you, and I want to make sure that I don't repeat myself too much of questions that I'm sure you're getting from uh, West, let's call it Western journalists in every interview. Um, but let, let's, let, this is, there is a concept that flows through this album. Um, should we look at it as that, or is it a full blown concept album? Uh, help me understand. Okay, well, it's it's not a concept album in the technical sense that every song is related you know yeah. what i mean often concept albums they'll even be musically thematic material that's 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 reiterated throughout exactly. different songs this this album like that really doesn't happen but i guess from a conceptual standpoint from a from a you know from the meaning but i guess that's more in lynn's territory because she writes all the lyrics mm -hmm. um she did mention that there are common concepts that are found in buddhism that's throughout the album you know yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of like specifically what those concepts are i think she's kind of better better suited to to answer that sure sure <laughs> but sure. I, I, would, I would say from from a conceptual standpoint that's probably the only aspect of it that might kind of fall yeah, into yeah, that yeah. Category. From a musical, from the I guess the instrumental, or or just from the sound part of it, not 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 speaking of the lyrics for a moment, um, I guess I don't know because you know people have asked me in past interviews like what what I think the music is or like where does it fall into mm -hmm. categorically or how would you you know describe it, and oftentimes I my answer might come off a little <laughs> pretentious or whatever, but it's it's really not. It's just like I don't know. Yeah, you know what I mean, but but the thing is, the I I kind of like it that way. Yeah, I like I like the music kind of being a mystery to myself because that way, when we're engaged in the creation process, mm, there's no preconceptions and there's no there's no rules or whatever. You know what I mean? I I like to let the music kind of write itself in the most organic way as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so however people might interpret it you know it's all good you know i mean people say the 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 common the common genre that's applied to it is progressive metal or progressive rock or progressive music and to me that's fine like if you want to call it that because i think progressive the word in itself implies that you know you're you're going to new places you're yeah, going yeah, to some yeah, yeah, yeah. part of territory and i think i think the the music does that you know i think it really if anything you know i, I you know, if it's good or bad, that's that's a subjective, uh, you know, question or, or, or response. But I think I can say with some degree of certainty that I think the music is quite unique. Um, oh, yeah. In today's in today's kind of progressive music world, um, you know, it goes to a lot of places that I think are very uncharted. Um, so in that sense, I think that that fits the definition of progressive in my mind. So that's exactly. cool. There's almost like a transcendent element to the music, and in some songs more than others. And I mean, almost to the point that you're almost like you know, meditation-like music, if you will. And it. I agree with you that the, the sound is very unique, uh, but it did remind me of an album, not that it sounds the same, but kind of like that same feeling that I got from it. And I put a big smile on my face because the album that I, that made that your album made me think of 
was If Then Else by The Gathering. And when oh, I then cool. open your Spotify playlist of songs that inspired you or that you're listening to, what do I see there? That underrated The Gathering album that so many people have forgotten about, but clearly found its way to Anthony. Fair to say that they've been a huge inspiration on you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, The Gathering, I I was listening to them since the 90s. Yeah. You know, I, I, I discovered them in the late 90s. I was like in high school still. And yeah, I mean, there was something about that band that really grabbed me because it was one of the first bands that was kind of like metal or whatever, but there was a melodic female voice over it. Yeah. And like it wasn't cheesy you know what i mean like i'm not gonna name bands but i feel like <laughs> a lot of bands that kind of started doing that you know with the female vocals over the metal like i in some ways it's i don't know i felt like it's a little you know maybe maybe uh templated you know, maybe yeah something a little kind of overdone a little bit but i felt like the gathering they were very it was very honest music um and and uh you know obviously annika the singer she's incredible i mean I, I saw her they actually came to new york city in 1999 they played at this small club called the cooler i think it was called the cooler it's i don't think it's there anymore but i went with a buddy of mine and you know uh you know there wasn't a lot of people because it was new york city i don't think they had like a huge following in new york city at that time so it was small there might there probably 30 or 40 people at the show or something but it was it was amazing you yeah know what i mean like just see her because at that time you know the internet it wasn't quite as developed in social media so what was kind of cool about that was especially a band that was kind of underground is the gathering like there was so much mystery behind the band you right because I mean? you can't nowadays there's no mystery left because you could see what what someone is eating for breakfast every day on on instagram or whatever but back then, you know, it's like all you know about the band is is the album. And even the albums were hard to get. I remember I had to go to the record store, you know, because we used to buy cassettes and CDs back then. And I, you would for, for a band like that, you'd have to special order it. You know, yeah, I'd go yeah, to like, yeah. uh, it was a place called Compact Disc World. It was like a it was a kind of a, a chain. And, you know, I, I knew like the owner or whatever. And I'd be like, hey, man, there's this band called the gathering can you can you special order this for me so you know you'd special order it and then you'd wait a couple of weeks and the album would come in and, and you'd be so happy the day and then you'd be you'd, you'd treasure that that album because not only you know you can't listen to it anywhere else but you had to actually special order it and it took a few weeks to come in and and you went all the way there and you paid the money <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah yeah so it's it's an interesting uh it's interesting to look back on those times you know how how precious a CD or a cassette tape was because it wasn't so easily accessible. Sorry, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm kind of rambling right now. Oh, but, hey, but, this is this is all good. But man. yeah, that, good. that 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 album really, uh, yeah. If then else, and I really actually loved uh, How to Measure a Planet, the the album that came out before that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those albums by The Gathering really had a big impact on me, actually. I mean, what's really cool about those two albums, and maybe even a little bit more on If Then Else, is, is you know, they they really moved, they, they started to move away on how to measure a planet of the, the tropey, you know, a little bit more gothic -y, symphonic metal, the female vocals right. that we started seeing at that time in Scandinavia and the Netherlands. But, you know, they started to move away from that and really found their unique, like, kind of trippy, kind of electronic influenced voice but where they really challenged you and every song gave you that curveball and that's what you guys are doing too to give me you no know, just to bring it back to your album every yeah, thanks, like whenever a song that. starts we never really know where it's going to end right yeah right so, right right um now, now uh, i want to obviously also address uh, another elephant in the room uh you know, not only is this album being very loudly endorsed by Devin Townsend but he was also involved in the production of the album He's even himself on the album as well. This is really cool because what doesn't happen a lot for, you know, Asian bands, um, 
having somebody like Devin tell the world like, hey, I really like this, it gives you instant credit, if you will, with the Western, you know, world, and people are going to check you out straight away. Um, right. That that must be, you know, a bit of a, a, a trip for you as well as an artist to go through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's very cool. And but to be honest, I'm just grateful. You know what yeah. I mean? Because because uh, well, first of all, he he was he was on board with this album. He mixed it and co-produced it, and he put a lot of time and work into it and care yeah. into it. Um, but most of all, the the guy is just the sweetest guy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and just through the whole process, he's just the sweetest guy, and so supportive and. You know, so I'm just grateful, you know, what I mean, because, you know, anybody of that stature who had who has that much output behind them, you know, he's he's a very prolific composer, oh, yeah. you know, and had so many years of experience in recording and touring and everything, you know, he's, he's, a, he's an incredible artist, you know, so, you know, he's to to for someone like that to give me the time of day, like I'm just this dude, you know, what yeah. I mean? and he really put a lot of you know time and care into it so i'm just i'm just grateful I'm just very yeah. grateful for it do you find yourself that you act a little bit also as a coach to the rest of the team and in how to deal with western media attention uh west western fans which i can only imagine is quite different than what the other bands are seeing Right. Um, well, no, I mean, in terms of my role in the band, like, there's not really anything going on like that. Like, I handle most of the interviews just simply because, you know, I speak English the best. You right. Know? <laughs> um, but More the than thing, the best. Come on, you speak it quite well. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that. But Jing, Jing, the guitar player, he speaks he speaks quite, quite good English. Chris, the bass player, I guess it's it's a little bit limited from what I understand. Because, I mean, I speak with the guys with the with the band where we speak 100% in Mandarin, right? Chinese. So, um, Lynn, I think she's working on her English. You know what I mean? Um, so I, it's just from a more realistic standpoint, you know. So like in in terms of the uh, social media presence, maybe I'm a little bit more kind of at the forefront. It's more just because of a language thing, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, Lynn, we're, we're trying, we're hoping to have her more kind of at the forefront, you know? So like, for example, recently on, on the social media, she, yeah. you know, did kind of a reflections about, you know, there's each song, those will be released slowly, you know, as the album gets released, just, you know, short little reflections on each yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. But, you know, we're going to, we'll just put subtitles for now, you know what I mean? So people can yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. What's he saying? So, um, so I think that's that's mostly it. Just comes from a practical standpoint, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, in the, it doesn't happen often, but when a band from you know, uh, a, let's call it the Far East, uh, breaks through in North America, they they break through quite substantially and 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 remain, you know, big successes um, with the traction this album is getting. Uh, you know, on the global scale, not just in the home market. Is that then also like a conscious plan for the band to like, hey, we really do want to focus or build a strategy to go outside of China's borders? Well, yeah, I mean, the 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 plan tentatively right now is we're hoping we can start pouring in like 2025, mm -hmm. um, you know, because now it's already April, almost May of 2024, you know, for the rest of the year, things are pretty much pretty much already locked kind of picked in. up locked in exactly and it'll give us time to kind of prepare because there's a lot that needs to be done between now and when that happens yeah so um but yeah it's definitely it's definitely on the to-do list um and there's a lot of other stuff in the works too you know there's going to be like a little animated series that's going to be released with the featuring kind of an entity named o um it's going to be a little 10 part animated series very short each episode's like two and a half minutes long or okay two minutes. Um, but it's very interesting. The, the little dialogues, it's kind of hard to describe, but those will, those will be released this year, probably bi-weekly coming soon after the, after the album release. Yeah, we yeah, also yeah. have a couple, we also have a couple singles, like new songs. One is actually a cover song, which I'm, I'll kind of leave it as a surprise for now, but 
but we're working on that and then of course the album and there'll probably be some maybe some remixes or acapella or, or instrumental okay. versions so there's there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline you know so we we yeah we just want to you know try to reach as many people as we can you know and we just hope that the music finds people that resonate with it you know that that dig it you got to be very present until you're actually able to go on tour and be physically present if you will so you said yourself yeah. You have to figure some stuff out. And I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, a lot of these songs, they do sound difficult to perform with just four people and no no extra help. I mean, I'm thinking about a song like Ocean, for example, where, you know, there's a lot of layering on the vocals as well. Um, so, so what, sh you know, knowing that it's going to take a few more months at least before we will see you on a stage, what's your vision right now? Like, how do you see these songs come to life? Well, I think just the reality is because harmony is so integral to the sound of this band, vocal harmony, mm -hmm. that, you know, we don't have the budget to bring a choir right. on the road with us. So, you know, it's just the, the, vo the aside from the main vocal line, which in some cases, some of the songs, the main, like a song like Ocean, the main vocal line in the verses isn't even that clear because it's, there's a lot of counterpoint going on. We have to pick and choose which one she wants to sing. Right. But all the vocals that she's not singing is just going to have to be in backing tracks. There's no way around it. Yeah. You know, which a lot of, which a lot of bands do nowadays. You know, I, it's funny because I've heard people asking like, well, who's, who's responsible for all the, the synthesizers because there's a lot of keyboards and stuff and i even forgot to because i i write all that stuff i in 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 into pro tools or, or right, whatever right. you know so but i even forgot to give myself the credit for it in the, in the <laughs> album but but whatever i mean i don't give a fuck but but the thing is like then there's that aspect of it too it's like right. well do you bring somebody did you add an additional person to play the the synthesizer parts or do you just you're just put it in the backing tracks I think from a from a financial standpoint, it might where we are at right now as a band, still in its kind of infancy stages. Right. It's probably it's probably more realistic just to put the synths in the backing tracks, and you know until we can bring a choir on the road, you know because it's it's all female vocals and we're three dudes. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. going to be not going to be too easy to replicate the vocal harmonies live. Sure. So yeah, it's just gonna have to be backing tracks, man. I mean, there's no there's no way around it. Uh, well, we're excited to see all this content that you've got planned, which sounds like you're gonna be extremely busy this year. Uh, come out, and then we'll keep our eyes open and our fingers crossed for many shows to be announced. And uh, obviously, we hope that you guys will come to North America and spend some time here in Canada as well. Anthony, I know it's late. I know it's an extremely hectic and busy week for you, but thank you so much for with the massive time difference that we have between Beijing and yeah. Toronto to still find some time to, to jump on a call with me. Thank you so much. I wish you the best with this album release and I'm excited for everything that's coming. Uh, thank, thank you so much. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.